Hey everybody, it's Brian Nemhauser, Hawk Blogger. And uh, as usual, I'll wait a few seconds as people start to join uh, this Periscope. I will cover what happened in the Seahawk scrimmage today. Just ended about 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago. And uh, uh, lots going on. I'll obviously write up my notes with all the details. I'm happy to answer some questions here as best I can. Um, and, uh, we got enough people in the hopper, so let's get started. Uh, really a couple things jumped out watching the scrimmage today. Uh, you had, you had, uh, the offense looking in really good shape. Uh, there's a lot of, um, scenarios where you had, uh, Jimmy Graham, uh, Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse out there with, uh, Robert Turbin. So, um, those were looking really good. Uh, Jimmy did not have a, a lot of big plays today. He had one catch uh, for a decent amount of yardage, um, had one underthrown ball from Russell that turned into an interception. I think that was uh, intercepted by Mohamed Sise, um, who had a nice pick there. Um, and <laughs> what room am I in? I'm in my, uh, my home office. So, um, And uh, I think that was really most of the, the looks that Jimmy got today. Um, I think the guys that really stood out, uh, one for me that just was different today than any other practice was Rod Smith. So running back, he's been fourth on the depth chart uh, at that position. You've got Marshawn Lynch, then Robert Turbin, then Kristen Michael. Technically, Rod Smith is fifth. So uh, Marshawn Lynch, then Robert Turbin, then Kristen Michael, then Thomas Rawls, then Rod Smith. Uh, Rod Smith today, he's an upright runner. Davis, uh, Sue mentioned that they compared him to Chris Warren. I think that's a, a pretty apt comparison. He's a little more physical than Warren ever was from my, my experience. Uh, Smith ran hard today and it wasn't just that he ran hard, but he ran, uh, decisively. His cuts are very, uh, clear. There's no hesitation. He got to the second level. He was going against the starting defense in most cases and, um, you know, made, made real contributions. He was definitely the best uh, of the, the new backs today. And I think what you saw from guys like Kristen Michael and Robert Turbin were great. Nothing bad there at all. Um, but if you're looking at Thomas Rawls, who's gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of pub, he did not have a great day today. I don't know if he even had five yards total rushing. Rod Smith probably had 30, 40 yards at least, um, in a, in a game where they don't do a lot of running to begin with. So tough sledding from Thomas Rawls today. Rod Smith looked really good. Um, I'm eager to see what he looks like uh, in the preseason game. You know, he probably won't get many snaps uh, after this first or second game. So that was great to see. Uh, other guy that had a standout day down the depth chart, Cason Williams, number 18, University of Washington grad, um, great track athlete. And uh, they started today with special teams uh, drills, and they were doing punt block drills. And uh, Cason is just a natural athlete. So he uh, he shows up in those things. It makes it look easy, and um, you know a bunch of other guys do as well. But but I noticed that watching him, he he should be a pretty good special teams player if he chooses to be. And uh, he probably had seven catches today, maybe eighty yards. Uh, really really nice game. Could have had some more even, but um, played well. And uh, uh, so he, I think he was really the second star, uh, you know, relatively speaking. I see a couple people asking about Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews, you know, he is okay today. I, I was really struck by watching Chris Matthews that I think we got to slow our roll a little bit with what kind of contributor he's going to be. Not that he's going to be a bad player, but, you know, there was a drop. There was some challenges getting open across the middle. Uh, I just don't think he's quite yet a complete receiver. I think he can make some plays down the field. I think that's a great role for him to play. I don't think his spot on the team is at risk in that case, but... Um, I don't, you know, he's nowhere near challenging Jermaine Curse for, for a starting spot uh, in, in the receiver position. Um, other guys in the receiver battle, I thought Ricardo Lockett looked good today, was open quite a bit. Um, I thought Kevin Norwood was okay. Um, I don't know if um, he did anything really to help himself today. Uh, Marshawn Lynch did not practice or did not practice today. I think they just held him out. Earl Thomas did not practice today. Um, I see a question here about uh, Kerry Williams. You know, there was a few balls completed on Kerry Williams, but he also had a really nice pick to end the game. So uh, I, I thought he he was all right. Um, Tyler Lockett, always questions about Tyler, and there should be 
good guy, good player. Um, you know, nothing really of note today with, with Tyler Lockett. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't really put a lot of stock in that. I mean, Tyler Lockett's established himself to me as being a contributing member of this team. He was part of the first and second string rotation at receiver. He's going to be in there. He's going to be part of the Seahawks team. He's going to contribute. You're going to know his name. There's not really much to question there. So, um, you know, I think they, they learned more about other players today, and, and, and that was fine. Doug Baldwin, um, speaking of a guy that you, he's kind of already has a spot, but had a really nice day today, um, got open a lot. There's clearly chemistry between him and Russell. No surprise, given that he's the leading receiver from last year. Um, and then at, from the starting defense, let's switch over and talk about starting defense for a second. Wow. Uh, now, granted, the way these scrimmages are set up is the first team offense goes against the second string defense. The second string offense goes against the first string defense. So you had Tavares and some of the backup linemen and, and so forth going up against uh, that second string defense. And then you had RJ Archer going up against, sorry, against the first string defense. Then RJ Archer was doing the same thing. And whew, uh, they did not get a first down for almost the entire game. At one point, the coaching staff, after like three or four consecutive three and outs, basically said, all right, we're going to give you this first down, even though you didn't get a first down, because we got to have enough tape on you to know what we're watching with the second string um, offense. So they gave him the first down, next play tackle for loss, next play sack, next play incompletion. Um, <laughs> you know, they went backwards. So, I mean, the, the starting defense without Earl Thomas, without Cam Chancellor, was just dominant today, totally dominant. Um, and if you look at the first string offense, their, their, their overall performance, the way these, these scrimmages usually go, um, the offense is kind of bumbling around. The defense is way ahead. Even the second string defense usually puts on a pretty good show. And uh, uh, the offense moved pretty well today. They scored on almost every possession, um, put up 24 points, and uh, looked really good. Um, I see a couple of questions about you know, who jumped out to me today, who is the MVP. Um, I mentioned Rod Smith. I mentioned Casey Williams. Other guys that jumped out to me, uh, Cliff Averill was just a freaking monster. I mean, he was at the quarterback every single snap. Um, he just tormented poor Jesse Davis, who honestly does not belong uh, on this roster. He should be among the first cuts um, at right tackle. I mean, yeah, was he playing left tackle? He's playing right tackle. Um, and uh, I thought uh, Michael Bennett was – Great today. Bruce Irvin was great today. Both of them were at the quarterback a lot. Um, you know, Jordan Hill had a sack today. Um, Cassius Marsh was getting back to the quarterback today. Cassius Marsh um, came up injured at one point. So I don't, you know, I bring that up just because it happened, but he limped off the field and then was back on for the next series. So, you know, I'm not too concerned about his injury, but I have to admit I let out a little bit of a curse uh, in front of some kids uh, when that happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's, uh, he seems to be okay and played well. Frank Clark was fine. Um, and, uh, you know, he had, he had some tough matchups. I thought Justin Britt was actually pretty good. Um, you know, I've been really hard on the kid. Uh, last year, I, I did not think he was uh, really prepared to start, especially as a pass, pass protector. He did start, and he was a horrible pass protector. So... Uh, you know, I'm not happy about that, but you know, I, I'm looking for improvement there. And today there was one series in particular, Frank Clark was actually playing what looked to be Leo and I haven't seen Frank Clark play Leo before, but I think that's where he was playing. Um, no, let me, let me take that back. Sorry. Cliff Averill had his Jersey up today and confused me. I wrote that in my notes. So he was playing five technique where he's been playing just like Michael Bennett. So Frank Clark rushed off the edge going against Justin Britt. And uh, they're both physical guys. And Britt just brawled and, like, knocked Clark back. Clark knocked him. They were really going at it. You know, it was the kind of uh, play that you thought maybe would end up with a, a pushing match or shoving match. Um, but they didn't, to their credit. They just went back to the huddle. But, but both of them were going hard. And I was impressed by Britt. Um, you know, I, I just haven't seen him pass protect that well before. Luke Wilson had a great diving touchdown today. Um, you know, they had a couple red zone possessions. And I have to admit, first red zone possession, uh, really since the Super Bowl, uh, I saw some questionable uh, play calls and <laughs> was wondering what was going to happen. And it occurred to me, I was like, man, if they blow this red zone possession, is that going to start being a thing that they think about? Um, 
and then uh, they ended up scoring. Uh, you know, so they, they found Robert Turbin was the guy that got it on a um, a check down to the middle um, of the field and, and, and was in the end zone for a touchdown. So Seahawks fans, first red zone possession since the Super Bowl was a touchdown. So uh, enjoy that. Um, other guys that I think are worth mentioning, uh, Kaysen Will- I sorry, said Kaysen Williams, but um, Tyrell Adams, linebacker, number 53. I've talked about him in my notes before, um, and he had a heck of a hit today. Just rolled into the, into the lane and smashed. Um, really impressive. He's been great in coverage so far, so it was great to see him against the run. I'm interested to see how he shows out in the preseason game. This is a guy that's a sleeper to make the team for sure. Um, I think uh, Kevin Pierre-Lewis looked good today. Looked really good. Um, had a awesome hit himself. Tackle for loss. Um, looks fast. Looks smart. Um, uh, impressed with him. I see a question here about Marcus Burley. Uh, Marcus Burley was uh, was solid today. I thought he, he broke in the ball well. Um, played smart. Um, nothing bad stood out there. Uh, Will Blackman had a uh, interception in the end zone. Returned 100 yards for a touchdown. So uh, he was uh, he was doing well. Um, Really, there is there. Oh, sorry. There's a question here about left guard. So yeah, that's a good question. So starting center today was Drew Nowak um, with the first team, and he seemed to play fine. No no snap problems. No real issues there. Um, and then um, starting left guard was Alvin Bailey. So uh, I think that's exactly the way it's supposed to be, and and that's probably how it will end up. Uh, Lem ended up. Lemuel Jean Pierre ended up coming in, but was with the second team. So I'm guessing that depth chart is flop now, and, and Nowak's on top. Um, so Coley did not get any reps with the first string. I think that's that was just a practice thing. I, I do not think he's really challenging for a starting role. Um, uh, Blackman, Cisse, or Burley, if one has to go, who is it? God, that's a tough call. Um, Blackman certainly is is the guy that is most ready to play and can play inside and out and is a, also a punt returner. So, But he also has a $1 million contract that's non-guaranteed, so they can gain that space back if they want, uh, maybe use it elsewhere. Uh, I think Cisse is a guy they're definitely going to keep. They didn't trade for him to let him go, and um, uh, he looks the part and has done nothing to dissuade them. I think he's a good special teams player as well. Uh, Burley? Burley might be the one to go. I don't know. It's tough. Um, I, really, between Burley and Blackman all along, I've kind of been watching that. And, and um, I just have a lot of trust in Will Blackman. I think that there's a lot of question marks in that cornerback room. And so I lean towards keeping some proven players. And, and Blackman is certainly more proven um, than a guy like Burley. Kristen Michael. Uh, everybody's got questions. Kristen Michael. Uh, Looked great today. Um, just looked like himself. You know, he touches the ball. He runs far. He runs fast. Uh, had a couple touchdowns today. Um, you know, uh, there's a nice fun play where Russell Wilson was scrambling and uh, ended up lateraling it back to Kristen Michael, who then took it probably 35 yards for a touchdown. They called it back for some reason. I, I don't think they liked it because it was kind of an improvisational play instead of the actual play. But uh, it happened. I saw it. So um, uh, he looked good. Um, there were some other questions that came by, and, and uh, feel free to keep asking questions. I'll try to touch on them. They did trade for Burley last year. Um, uh, let Blackman go the year before, by the way. Um, so I, I don't think they're eager to look let Burley go either. We'll see. And Burley's been great on special teams. McNeil, Douglas McNeil. Uh, cornerback today uh, looked good to me. Uh, I wouldn't say he looked as good as the other cornerbacks. He's, he's you know a couple days into this. But he looked a lot better than the last time I saw him on Thursday. And he was, there was plays he was on Tyler Lockett. And I was kind of like, eh, you know, he's going to shake McNeil and make him look really bad. I didn't see that happening. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, I think uh, McNeil experiment at cornerback looks to be in good shape. And I think there's nothing that would keep them from continuing it. Ty Smith, I see there's a question there. Uh, didn't have a great day today. I think he's a question mark to make the roster, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure he's he's going to make it. Um, Marshawn did not practice today. Um, I think they were just giving him the day off. Um, let's see. I think I've covered most of the stuff. You know, I talked about uh, Frank Clark and, and Cassius Marsh. Um, so feel free to watch the replay. Uh, I don't want to keep talking about the same things for people that have been on for a while. Um, uh, Anthony McCoy. So Cooper Helfit was actually out today, looked injured. Um, Anthony McCoy 
you know, I don't know. I don't think he's really stood out to me so far. So, um, you know, I think Cooper Helfett's got a decent chance to to make the roster over Anthony McCoy. You're just going to have to see uh, how things, you know, work out in the preseason games. And, and uh, you know, I think Cooper's a decent player. Uh, question Mike Lewinsky. I don't think he's got a shot to start. I think Bailey and, and uh, uh, Sweezy are, are pretty set. Um, I got to tell you, uh, Sweezy, <laughs> dude is nasty. Um, there was one play where they were running the ball, and um, and uh, it was kind of after the play, and he just reached out with one hand and just knocked Keenan Lambert back like five yards. It was just, you heard it. It was like a shock. Uh, and it wasn't dirty. It was just like power, pure power. So, you know, Sweezy, <laughs> I think that guard tandem is going to be pretty good. Um, I see a question about Cam. Um, and this is a good question about Sherman and Maxwell in their rookie camps. So I'll get to that. Cam stuff, you know, folks, he's going to be back. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. They'll figure this out one way or another. John and Pete know what they're doing. Cam doesn't want to miss any games, you know, Frankly, there's a bigger risk of him hurting himself if he's here than if he's not. So, you know, let him rest. He'll be fine. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Um, and then the question about how did Maxwell and Sherman look as rookies in camp compared to these corners? Not really a comparison. I, I actually, you know, Sherman and Browner and Maxwell all looked really physical um, and gangly as rookies. And there was a lot of pass interference, a lot of holding. And I really thought those guys were intriguing, but I also thought they were just going to get calls all the time, um, which turned out to be true, but they also turned out to be really good. This group, there's, you know, Ty Smith is pretty physical, I think, but he's pretty much just grabby. Um, you know, there's, Cissé looks, he looks fine. He looks interesting. Um, he has the physical skills. Um uh, you know, I think McNeil's the intriguing one. Like, you never know when you got an athlete like that. He's certainly like his build is very much like Richard Sherman's. So, you know, if he can pick it up, it's a guy that you keep around and see if you can groom because you know he can also play wide receiver and play special teams. He was playing really hard in special teams today. Um, it was really stood out compared to anyone else. Um, and then there was another question. Sorry, I missed it, guys. Um, something that came up around, what was it? Sorry, you can ask the question again if you want. But um, yeah, I think other than that, uh, yeah, Chris Richard is D coordinator. It's hard to say. You know, these are scrimmages, so you don't really know. There's no, there's no game planning for for a preseason game. There's really no game planning for scrimmages. I don't think they're like calling much. Um, the defense looked pretty similar. Um, question here about Noak versus Jean Pierre. Noak was a starter. I think it's going to stay that way. I think you should you should get to see that. Jesse Williams was suited up. I did not see him get on the field. Um, so maybe he's just getting closer. I thought the way he was padded up, he'd be in there, but he wasn't. Earl Thomas was not as either. Um, he didn't play. Yeah, Lockett's going to be our kick returner, punt returner. I'm 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 99% sure of that. Um, <laughs> Terry Oculan, man, you got to get on sooner, man. We talked about KPL. He was great today. It looked really good. Um, Offensive chemistry, I think, look great. I'm just way ahead of where they usually are. Uh, receiver sets, I'll get into that more in my write-up. You know, I got to look at my notes because I wrote a bunch of that stuff down. But um, hard to recall all that stuff. I saw a lot of Curse, Baldwin, um, Graham, Lockett, uh, uh, Tyler Lockett, um, you know, as a common combination or, or variation of those guys out there. I think that's pretty much what you're going to have. Uh, Eric Pinkins, um, I didn't notice him today and, uh, he was good. You know, he's been good through camp. You know, I think he's got a chance to make it, um, team speed. Uh, I think faster on offense. Um, I think roughly equivalent on defense, you know, and without Earl and, and, and Cam in there, you know, it's a little different, but, uh, I got the trophy at, um, I can't remember, it's up north. Softy uh, gave me a clue on where to go. I'll try to remember if I can figure it out. Um, but uh, let's see, Shed, Deshaun Shed played well. I thought Deion Bailey actually got did well. Um, I liked what I saw from him, and uh, I think 
Um, oh, it's, the trophy was Mill Creek Sports, I'm pretty sure. Mill Creek. Um, I thought this, Stephen Terrell had a nice game, had an interception, playing safety, um, was in the right position. Um, so, yeah, you know, guys, it was, it was good. I'm going to wrap up there. But um, uh, my large takeaway was offense definitely 100% ahead of where they've been the last two years at this point in camp. Um, defense, pretty much where they've been. So good, so dominant, and uh, really going to be interesting to see uh, where we go uh, on Friday, the first game. So take care, everybody, and uh, go Hawks.